We have one more minute, so we'll wait. Lynn, did you admit everyone for now? Yes, it, it already started. Okay. All right, welcome everyone. Welcome to our human development uh, webinar series of uh, the Advancing Education Muslim Societies uh, Initiative of IIIT, which is the International Institute of Islamic Thought. Today, we have a, a very special guest with us from the West Coast, so it's nine o'clock for her and 12 noon for us here in, um, on the East Coast. If you are in other countries outside this time zone, we appreciate your attendance and we appreciate you being with us today. The Advancing Education in Muslim Societies webinar series has been a piece of the human development program of IIIT, which deals with uh, psychosocial well-being, values and competencies, uh, life skills that are important for Muslim youth and others alike. We focus on Muslim societies and we have conducted empirical research on youth educators, university students and university faculty um, in different countries. About 15 countries participated in our research. One of our constructs and one of our ways of framing the different values we investigated, we can call them values, competencies, has been really looking at social responsibility, civic engagement, and in the midst of trying to figure out how can we expand more on our knowledge and for our audience to know more about our research, but also the concept of social responsibility, we are thrilled and very um, honored to have with us Dr. Laura Ray Lake, Professor Lake is an associate professor of social welfare and human development and psychology at the University of California, Los Angeles. She received her PhD in human development and family studies from Penn State University. Dr. Ray Lake's program of research aims to explain the development of civic engagement across adolescents and young adulthood and identify factors that enhance youth civic engagement. This interest is grounded in the assumption that young adults, adolescents have a hold abundant potential to act as positive change agents and address society's problems on local, national, and global scales. And that's really aligns so well with our view regarding Muslim youth and youth in Muslim societies that we need to look at them from an asset-based orientation rather than a deficit orientation and look how they could become what can we do to promote and support them to become the future leaders? So we are very happy to have this line of research, um, Dr. Uh, Ray Lake, that you have been taking on and, and I can't wait to hear more, but to go back to your uh, uh, bio, you have published over 60 research articles, book chapters, and your work uses multiple methodologies and takes developmental, cultural, and contextual perspective in studying youth and civic engagement. Some of the recent work you have uh, done has um, actually one of the award you have received. Congratulations on that. In 2020, you were awarded the Mid-Career Award for Research Excellence from the Society for Research on Adolescents. Right now, Dr. Ray Lake serves as an associate editor at the Journal of Research on Adolescence and as an elected member of the Executive Council of the Society for Research on Adolescence. Thank you so much, Laura, Dr. Ray Lake, for joining us. The stage is yours. You will speak and present your um, research. 
and we will monitor the chat and the uh, uh, Q&A. And please, there is no audio or video for our audience here. We ask you to write your questions in the chat and we will make sure to um, feel those when the time comes for the Q&A after uh, Professor Leilek finishes her presentation. So thank you again for being very, with us and the stage is yours. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Nasser. And um, I'm really excited about the work that you're doing on social responsibility. So I'm looking forward to talking about that more because I feel like there aren't very many scholars who really think about social responsibility for young people um, in those terms. So uh, that's really gonna be the focus of my talk today. Although as, um, as was mentioned, my larger program of research focuses on youth civic engagement, and I consider social responsibility values as an important part of that. So let me, let me give you a little overview of what I'm going to talk about today. Um, and I definitely value and welcome your comments and questions. So I will look forward to those um, throughout, but I will, um, I'll spend a little time defining social responsibility values, and then situating it within this larger umbrella of, of youth civic engagement. Um, then I'll describe some work that I did examining developmental trajectories of social responsibility values across adolescents. And then uh, we'll move into considering the role of adolescents' experiences in their context and how they support or hinder social responsibility development. So uh, let's just dive in here. Um, I want to start with how I define civic engagement. So I define civic engagement as behaviors, values, and attitudes, knowledge, and skills that result from interactions between individuals in their context and constitute pro-social and political contributions to community and society. So that is quite a mouthful. So let me just break it down a little bit. In, um, in discussing how civic engagement is multidimensional. So it's actions, but it's also made up of these psychological dimensions like values, attitudes, knowledge, and skills. I say that civic engagement is rooted in person context interactions because um, whether in the abstract or very concretely, to be civically engaged requires some interaction with other people or situating oneself in a larger community or society. And then finally, there are a lot of different types of contributions that people can make um, in society. Um, and one common distinction in civic engagement work is that um, is the difference between being political and then communal or helping oriented. So civic engagement can take many different forms. And especially for young people, young people are constantly reinventing and reimagining what civic engagement looks like for them. So um, that's partly what makes it fun to study and, and important to study across a lot of different contexts and cultures. So, oops. Um, let me move into um, talking about how I define social responsibility then. So um, given the definition of civic engagement, it's probably clear that, um, that it includes values for me. So I see social responsibility values as a dimension of civic engagement. So I define social responsibility as a value orientation that's rooted in moral principles of care and justice that um, seek to prioritize a greater good. Um, so these are values, you know, and values are priorities individuals have that guide de decisions and actions and orientations toward the world. Um, they're really moral values um, and moral values emphasize caring and also can emphasize justice and fairness and social responsibility values do both of these things. And then um, the prioritizing of the greater good, that's a phrase that I'd like to return to in just a bit and interrogate a bit further. So we'll hold on to that. Um, but let me show you next um, briefly a multidimensional model of youth civic engagement. This came from a study that I did with a diverse sample of adolescents in the United States. 
And I show you this to emphasize the point from that definition of civic engagement that civic engagement is multidimensional. So um, in this study, we found some empirical evidence supporting this model, which demonstrates that um, each dimension of civic engagement is distinct but related. So this model included different types of behavior, so helping, um, also volunteering, and um, some political behaviors, as well as um, civic skills, um, beliefs, and values, and namely social, res social responsibility values. Um, so this shows that um, that social responsibility values is a is a dimension of civic engagement. And then furthermore, I wanted to just show you some of the correlations between these dimensions um, to show you that social responsibility values is positively related to all of the other beliefs, skills, and behaviors within this model of civic engagement. So social responsibility is very interconnected with these other aspects of civic engagement. As you can see from this, it's most strongly related to informal helping um, here, um, but also strongly related to political beliefs, civic skills, and then um, positively related, but a little bit less so to environmental behavior, volunteering, voting intentions, and then uh, least related to news consumption, so following the news. So, um, let me just move on to, to talking about how there are at least two related ways to think about how social responsibility and other forms of civic engagement are related to each other. Um, so with my limited artistic abilities, I've tried to depict on the left here, um, showing that social responsibility can motivate civic action. And then likewise, by engaging in civic action, young people can strengthen their social responsibility values and these, these larger priorities to, um, to give back and contribute to the greater good. So this is really a reciprocity kind of model, a process um, that young people are undergoing by um, having social responsibility values and engaging in civic actions. So on the right um, is a second way, um, a little bit distinct way of thinking about this relationship as separate but overlapping dimensions. So this depiction shows um, or the idea that there are certain civic actions that are not motivated by social responsibility, and then certain aspects of social responsibility that inform other behaviors that aren't necessarily considered civic. So social responsibility has other implications um, besides just for civic engagement. But then there's this overlap in the middle, which we can call socially, responsi socially responsible civic actions. Um, and uh, we can look at those specifically. So these are not mutually exclusive. They're just different ways of thinking about the relationship between social responsibility and uh, civic action and the important interplay between the two of them. So um, I think it's worthwhile um, to consider why and how civic engagement matters in the lives of young people in particular, um, and then more broadly for society. And here I specifically narrow down to socially responsible civic engagement because not all civic engagement will have necessarily the same kinds of impacts on young people or on society. Um, but civic engagement that's motivated by social responsibility can be beneficial to the young people who engage in it. So in a recent uh, review paper, which is going to be coming out soon, Parissa Ballard and I reviewed the literature on civic engagement and documented from this literature base how civic engagement can benefit young people's identity development. Um, it can be beneficial for academic engagement, for health and well-being, um, for purpose and meaning in life, and for other aspects of social and cognitive development. It is important to note a caveat, though, that not all forms of civic engagement provide the same benefits and not all young people experience the same benefits from these, um, from these civic um, engagement behaviors. So um, a second point is that socially responsible civic engagement can strengthen communities themselves. 
um, when young people and when other even adults, when all of us are more civically engaged, we can build social capital, we can strengthen community resources and infrastructure, and then um, um, socially responsible civic engagement can also lead to larger social change. Uh, this occurs more often with um, political forms of civic engagement, such as um, policy change that can result from social movements and things like that. Okay, so let me um, let me just go back to this phrase that I mentioned earlier in my definition of social responsibility, where I said that social responsibility prioritizes the greater good. Um, so I wanted to just acknowledge that the, the definition of what do we mean by the greater good is something that's disputed um, within this country in the United States and also in other countries and contexts as well. So uh, we may agree that some forms of civic action advance the greater good uh, for people or society, but in other ways we, we disagree. And political ideology, social norms, cultural practices, and other factors can contextualize what the greater good means in a certain context and shape what it means for each of us. So um, it gives us sometimes different ideas about um, what types of civic engagement will most lead to um, positive outcomes um, for society. There's also a dark side of civic engagement, which um, tends to refer to civic engagement that's aimed at perpetuating oppression of others, whether that's uh, racism or xenophobia or sexism, et cetera. Um, and again, how we define oppression um, may vary a little bit across cultures. Um, so by focusing on social responsibility values, and this is all why I've really been interested in social responsibility values, uh, which is a moral value orientation, emphasizing care and justice. This is one way that we can try to define and situate, <clears throat> excuse me, civic engagement that's aimed at the greater good. So civic actions paired with social responsibility values would be more likely to advance the greater good. Than, um, than if we weren't considering social responsibility. Okay, so hopefully that leads us all to the conclusion that civic engagement must be defined and understood within a certain context. And context could refer to community, it could refer to racial and ethnic group, our religious group, uh, national or um, political context, there's a lot of variation um, that we could capture when we think about civic engagement. And I want to offer just two um, quick examples that from my own work that show how, um, how we might think about civic engagement within a particular context and how it could end up looking different compared to other contexts. So um, this first example comes from a monograph for the Society for Research on Child Development that I wrote with a colleague, Laura Abrams, published in 2020. This is a qualitative study of youth of color in urban high poverty neighborhoods in uh, upstate New York. And a first question we started out with was how these young people defined civic engagement in their community context their communities faced considerable community violence, which was really ended up being an important context for how they, um, how they defined civic engagement and how they were able to engage in community. So in this figure here, I circled two forms of civic engagement that these young people discussed that were unique, particularly to them and their context. And one was a form of community helping in which they described intervening to protect others from harm. Um, so they engaged in behavior that protected their friends from gang involvement or from street violence. And this was a signature element of what it meant for them to help others in their community. And then a second example we defined as personal responsibility. So at first glance, this may have seemed like focusing on the self and prioritizing staying out of trouble and making good choices for oneself. 
But when young people talked about this, um, it became clear that um, the reason they saw it as civic engagement is because it was done for the good of other community members. So by focusing on being the best they could be, they were being a good representation for their community and making their community better. So personal responsibility here was defined as civic action or civic engagement because it reflected also social responsibility. So let me just give you a, a second example. Whoops. Um, a second example um, comes from another qualitative study um, that I'm working on now with Black youth in, in Los Angeles who are highly civically engaged. And um, this model comes from a chapter that um, is in a forthcoming book led by me in collaboration with a team of scholars and in seeking to describe what does civic engagement look like for these Black youth, we realized the importance of, of looking at the interplay between values and actions because um, these young people engaged in a lot of different kinds of civic actions but they were all done in the pursuit of a larger goal of advancing racial justice. And racial justice is a value and priority that overlaps with social responsibility, but has a more specific uh, focus on justice and equity across racial groups. So to pursue this value, um, young people engaged in lots of different forms of helping and advocacy. Um, they were interested in redistributing resources more fairly in their neighborhoods. They were interested in helping themselves and their peers um, navigate racism in ways that were safe um, and uplifting to each other. And then they were focusing on bettering themselves to better their communities, which was a very similar theme to that personal responsibility theme that I described in the past study. So for these young people, social responsibility includes racial equity and justice um, and actions that align with that priority. Okay, so hopefully these examples illustrate um, this larger point that civic engagement and social responsibility should be understood together and also need to be understood in a particular context. Okay, so let me move on to the um, sort of second segment of the talk where I want to focus on change over time in um, social responsibility values in particular. Um, so let me start with um, a little bit of rationale for why we would want to map out change over time in civic engagement and specifically in social responsibility for young people. Um, one reason why we'd want to do this is that this is a type of question that's really core to the study of development. So we want to position civic engagement and social responsibility within a developmental framework because it's really a core part of how we understand adolescents as whole people and who they are as citizens of the world. Um, so seeing civic engagement is really important to their development. A second reason is that documenting how young people change in social responsibility is an important step to then ask why they're changing over time. So once we understand the patterns, we can start to explain why they exist. And so um, I'm going to walk through both um, the how young people change in social responsibility and then offer some explanations as, as I go through this. So when we think about social responsibility values specifically, there are a few reasons from the literature to expect growth and decline. So there's sort of competing hypotheses here. So we might expect growth in social responsibility values because uh, we know that adolescents are increasingly um, increasing over time in decision-making autonomy. So they're gaining more, uh, more independence to think for themselves and develop their own values. They're um, similarly gaining in perspective taking ability, in pro social helping behavior, and in pro social moral reasoning. So, these are all competencies that are very interconnected with social responsibility values, um, leading us to think that we might see some increases. But there's some, also some reasons to expect decline in social responsibility based on the literature. And one is that social trust declines across adolescents. And social trust really reflects how young people feel about others around them. 
Um, and that's really fundamental to informing social responsibility values. We also know from some other forms of moral reasoning um, that there are U-shapes in moral reasoning, meaning that at certain points in middle adolescence, we sometimes see declines in moral reasoning um, and moral psychologists often discuss this as a potential time of cognitive or social reorganization um, that happens, um, you know, um, in the brain and in, you know, in identity and all of that. And so, um, so we see those declines, which could be related to social responsibility. Additionally, we know that there are some declines in supportive contexts during adolescence, including parental warmth, in compassion messages that families give to adolescents, school climate, and also peer support. So, um, so we have these competing hypotheses, which makes it really important, um, or was an important foundation for us to look at how does social responsibility um, change across adolescents. And these findings came from a study that was published in 2016 with my mentor, Connie Flanagan, and also colleague, Amy Sievertson, using Connie's social responsibility and prevention project data. I won't, um, I won't dwell on the methods too much here, but um, just that there were three annual waves. There was a large sample that was socioeconomically diverse, but was mostly white two-parent families in the um, East Coast of the United States. Okay, so um, we had six, a six item measure of social responsibility values, and this assesses the importance of various forms of helping behavior and prioritizing contributing to the larger community as well in society. Okay, so we estimated um, a best fitting growth curve, which ended up being quadratic. And this is signified by the black line on the screen. Um, I also included the raw data because um, it is only a three wave study. So that's just behind there. Um, so basically the patterns indicated that adolescents values of social responsibility are declining from early to middle adolescence and then leveling off from there. Um, and ages of 10 to 15 seem to, seem to correspond with the largest declines in social responsibility. So what does this mean? What are some of the implications of this um, finding? The main implication is that we really need to increase opportunities for social responsibility development in adolescents. Also, um, in taking a positive development perspective on adolescents, we want to look for explanations of these declines that entail considering what are adults' roles in shaping this pattern, not just thinking about um, what is going on with young people that creates this pattern. So, so that'll feed into what I say next. But, but one caveat I also wanted to acknowledge is that this is an overall trend, so it represents an average. So it doesn't necessarily apply to all the ado every adolescent in our sample, and it may not generalize to adolescents in other contexts. So, um, so I hope that more work is done and maybe um, with some of the data from the Institute um, could look at this as well. So, um, so let me transition into the third part of the presentation then, which is examining the experiences in context that shape adolescent social responsibility. And I'm gonna focus on two factors, relationships with others um, and organized activities. So I'll start with um, thinking about relationships. And in doing so, I'm going to jump right back to the same study where we found declines in social responsibility values. And I want to add a conclusion to that story um, because it does implicate the role of adolescents' everyday context. So um, social capital theory argues that positive bonds and relationships with others can create these norms of reciprocity. So when, um, when individuals feel like they are um, in a trusting, positive, supportive environment, then they're more likely to want to give back and contribute positively um, to that environment and to the greater good. Um, so, um, as I mentioned before, um, there is some research also that points to 
adolescents reported declines in um, support from family and in school environments and with peers during the same period. So what we hypothesized is that adolescents' perceptions of these positive bonds across these contexts, which we call ecological assets, would predict um, higher levels of social responsibility values and change over time and social responsibility. So I'll just briefly kind of um, reflect on the types of measures that we used, which were aimed at getting at adolescents' perceptions of these different ecological assets from trusted friendship to um, family democratic climate, family compassion messages, school solidarity and democratic climate, and then positive neighborhood climate as well. And then we had some, some control variables, but I'll, um, I'll just move to the main findings. And what we found is that um, all of these, uh, the six ecological assets that we looked at were all declining across adolescents as well. Um, so the, the gray line here, if you can see my cursor, that's social responsibility values, which I showed you earlier. And all these other factors are these ecological assets. Um, and so not only did we find that these ecological assets were declining, but we found that the declines in these assets was directly related to declines in social responsibility values. So there was a predictive relationship there. Um, so these models are showing empirical evidence that um, that that declining supports um, that adolescents perceive in various contexts of their everyday lives is related to their declines in social responsibility values. Okay, so um, I wanted to add a couple of insights from from the qualitative work that I do into what these experiences might look like. So what kinds of experiences adolescents might be having with adults that can shape their social responsibility in this negative way. Um, so this is a quote from that qualitative study of urban youth of color in upstate New York and where many young people talked about not being taken seriously by adults. And so Floyd here shared a story of how he was treated by his teacher saying, my teacher ignored me. Like if I ask a question, he would look away or if I say something, he would think I'm lying. Um, Tony um, shared a different story with, with a similar um, feeling, which was um, she was explaining an experience of how adults at the school responded to her debate club's advocacy around different school policies. And she said, they'll come to our debate meets and when we're debating other schools about stuff in the school or in the community, but it's like, as kids, do they take us seriously? It's like nothing changed about lunch, nothing changed about school, nothing changed about after school hours. Um, and activities and whatever. All I have to say is we do need to be heard too. So when young people are not taken seriously by adults, they may feel less motivated to prioritize the greater good um, and keep working toward those larger goals. And then I just wanna sh share this one more quote because um, Tanisha in the same sample gave advice to adults, which suggests how to avoid potentially this drop off in social responsibility. And she says, when kids have an idea, don't brush it off. If they have something to say, really listen. And if they really are passionate and really wanna do it, um, try to help them as much as they can. If you shoot them down when they're young, then it's just not gonna get any better. As they get older, it's not going to encourage them to continue to think outside of the box or want to help. So, um, the implications then here are that um, ecological assets across many different contexts matter for social responsibility. Um, this study is not causal in design, so it's, it's not showing a causal relationship between these um, supportive contexts and social responsibility, but it does suggest that if we can increase positive bonds across these contexts, then we could potentially mitigate the decline in social responsibility or even promote positive growth in social responsibility values. 
So I have one more piece that I want to present on, and that's um, the role of organized activity. So activities that occur outside of regular school time, either in, in through the school or through a community or um, organization. So um, this is a study that's um, currently, un, it's a manuscript under review. So it's, you know, hot off the press. It's led by my colleague, Amy Sievertson. And we wanted to document the role of organized activities like school and community clubs, sports, arts, and also religious activity involvement, and how these activities inform civic engagement over time. So there has been other research that's linked um, these activities to civic development. And we wanted to add the, to the literature by showing what is the mechanism. So what's actually happening in these activities that's really mattering for civic engagement. And here specifically, I'm gonna focus in on social responsibility and those findings, but we looked at some other dimensions of civic engagement as well. Uh, we looked at three types of experiences. Um, one is opportunities for personal growth. So within activities, um, how are young people learning new things um, and experiencing growth as a person? Um, need supporting relationships. So this is how relationships in these activities support young people's psychological needs for autonomy, for competence, and for connection with other people. And then the frequency of um, discussing social and political issues. Um, so that um, having political discussions is one of the predominant predictors of civic engagement that we know of in the literature. So we wondered how much is this happening in different activity contexts? So we hypothesize that these would be mechanisms, these experiences would um, help explain how organized activity involvement relates to um, civic engagement and particularly social responsibility. So uh, for this, um, this data came from a study called the Roots of Engaged Citizenship Project. And this is a five-year longitudinal study across three regions of the United States um, that I led with, with two other colleagues. Um, and we had a racially and ethnically diverse sample. Um, so let me, let me jump to the social responsibility findings. And I want to draw your attention to two things. Um, well, first let me, I don't know if I said that we looked um, across ninth through 12th grades in this longitudinal study. Um, so we looked at their activity involvement and then also their developmental experiences. So I wanna draw your attention to first thinking about um, the activities themselves. So when we think about social responsibility values, it's really religious activities, um, participation that is positively related to social responsibility at every age in, um, in high school, in this high school age group or adolescent period. And then additionally, um, opportunities for personal growth in any of these activity contexts, as well as relationships that support young people's um, psychological needs are also positively related to growth and social responsibility at each of these time points. Um, political discussions was um, only related to social responsibility at ninth and 10th grade. So we're still trying to understand um, that more limited finding. But let me just um, talk about some implications and then I'll wrap up and I'll look forward to discussion. So the implications of this is that first, um, religious or spiritual activity participation is a very important developmental context for social responsibility values for young people. Um, so I think that's been found before, but this just uh, further gives support for that important role that religious activities can play for forming these values that prioritize the greater good. And then um, in addition, um, a takeaway is that um, when adults in activities can cultivate these opportunities for personal growth for young people and also these supportive relationships, then these experiences seem to really benefit adolescent social responsibility development. 
So let me just offer a couple of takeaways and then um, then I'll open it up for questions and discussion. So um, a few bigger takeaways from this presentation is that social responsibility is an important foundation for civic action. Um, and also that this may look different across different contexts. So we do need to continue uh, researching uh, social responsibility and civic engagement in lots of different cultural contexts and groups um, to understand it better. Um, a second takeaway is that relationships with others can both support or hinder social responsibility, depending on how supportive those relationships are. So we saw that overall there were declines in many different kinds of supports that adolescents um, report experiencing. And this is important because um, you know, we need to create supportive context for adolescents. And also these supports are very malleable and, and open to intervention and change. So there is there are actionable steps that we can take to change the environments that young people spend time in. And then additionally, um, relationships and these opportunities for personal growth could be cultivated in a variety of different settings in adolescents' lives. So whether it's families or schools, organizations, um, you know, religious activities and communities, um, these experiences play an important role in social responsibility development. So I'll stop there. Um, just a quick thank you to the different funders of these studies and acknowledgements to my collaborators and participating young people in schools who engaged in this research. So um, thank you very much for having me. Thank you so much for uh, this rich presentation, Dr. Ray Lake. I would like to um, start with a few questions that I have, and then there are a few that came from the audience. I also saw a hand raised or a raised hand, so I don't know if that's someone who wanted to speak. If you don't mind fielding or writing your question in the Q&A or the chat, we'll be happy to ask the question, but we don't have that function available to um, use audio. So my first question to you is that um, we in our study looked at uh, responsibility, social responsibility, personal responsibility, and I saw that you made the distinction between personal responsibility and social responsibility, but some of the um, competencies we grouped under responsibility in general were um, uh, competencies like self-regulation, emotional regulation, self-efficacy, did you see in your research that any of those play a part of some sort, correlate or predict the ability to be more personally or socially responsible would be my first question. Yeah, um, I do think that that's really important research to keep doing because I don't know that we have a lot of established associations between those competencies and social responsibility, but there are a few studies and, and I have one study that was, it was led by Aaron Metzger and it's, I think it was published in 2018. It was a cross-sectional study showing that some of those competencies like self-regulation, um, there was, we also had empathy, um, perspective taking, um, having a future orientation, that those things are related to social responsibility. Um, you mentioned like personal responsibility and social responsibility. And I think that that is an intrude, I think they're distinct, but I think um, hopefully some of the examples I gave that are with the qualitative work start to show that they are more related for, for some young people. So some young people see them as very related to each other. So I'm going to take care of myself and do my best and do well in school. Um, but that is a goal that I have for my community, not just for myself. And so that more collectivist orientation pulls for having personal responsibility, I think be very intertwined with social responsibility. I think for other young people, um, you can be personally responsible and not necessarily be thinking about the larger 
social good or greater good that maybe you want to get ahead and you want to do your best and um but you're not necessarily connecting that to like a larger community goal so i think that's where there may be more related for some people than others yeah we we also um hypothesize that sense of belonging the more you feel grounded and belonging to your community the more you are responsible and and engage civically. Of course, we weren't able to investigate that, but that's part of the framework that we hypothesize in, in our study. So, and it makes sense, but the, the contextual factors like collective versus individualistic orientations might also play a role, but we haven't looked into, into that specifically. There was a question from the audience on how do you really prepare and implement youth um, and you know to 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 become or to be more socially responsible. Um, are there areas of study or projects or any insights on how would you take the results of the decline versus you know in the certain age groups and so forth? How would you prepare youth to become more socially responsible and and I would add civically engaged. Yeah, I mean um, I have two thoughts on that. One is that. Um, I really, that's one reason I really like the organized activity um, work that we're doing, because I think that there's a lot of promise in, um, in these after school settings um, where they are more open, um, you know, open for young people to explore their values, to have, explore relationships, to get different kinds of adult support than they can get from just a typical school um, and religious, you know, um, communities play an important piece of that too. Um, so regardless of what community young people can plug into, I think being a part of a supportive community is part of what cultivates those values. So when they see other people um, showing care for them, um, then they want to also show care in a community as well. So I think that that's, um, that's a really powerful connection. And then um, I didn't really speak on this, but um, but there there's some research showing, you know, a lot of times we want to predict civic engagement. So how do we get young people to be civically engaged? And that's what a lot of my work has focused on. But if you take it and switch it in the other direction and think about, let's just plug young people into opportunities to care for and help other people, often those experiences can really cultivate social responsibility as well, because um, research does show that regardless of whether young people were required to do service or do it voluntarily, that once they're there, if they can make meaningful connections with other people um, and feel like they made an impact in making someone happy or, you know, caring for someone's needs, that 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 is a very powerful um, and transformative, you know, experience for anybody and, and including young people. Yeah, and, and of course, for um, those who are in the US and most of our audience is outside the US, just looking at the chat, there are these programs to, you know, to, to encourage people to volunteer, to encourage youth to volunteer, to encourage them to be more engaged and of course, the whole area, content area, and many of the school systems of civic education, of civic, um, you know, uh, what do they call it, social studies, are places in the school systems, the PK-12 school systems, to encourage that engagement that um, you're talking about. Of course, in addition to the after-school organized activities that you mentioned, I think we can do more on that, but I also think that we can look at other contexts and encourage people to look at these models where civic engagement is part of the curriculum in many school systems. Um, I, I'm, I'm curious about the religious and the spirituality measure that you use when you talked about, you know, um, religious activities, uh, supported uh, civic engagement or supported social responsibility or correlated with them. Uh, what, um, what did you measure in, in the religiosity or, or spirituality 
uh, measures? What were the components? There are so many different measures. There's so many different. We just had a very simple measure, which was um, asking young people to tell us how many hours on average per week they spent in different activities. So we had sports, um, school clubs, community clubs, um, arts, and then religious um, religious groups or activities. And so, um, so that's one thing is that we didn't really ask about denomination. We didn't really ask about like how, how spiritual or how important religion was to them. This was really just capturing how much time they were spending with the religious community um, in different activities. So I think that's powerful in itself because there's so many different types of religious communities. Um, but I think maybe regardless of what denomination or what type of religion, um, there are these core messages that, that really do seem to convey social responsibility and greater good. And so um, it would be interesting to look more into um, different, different experiences with religion, I think, and, and dive more into that dynamic. Thank you so much. That, that helps uh, clarify the, the component of, of what does it mean, you know, in terms of religious or spiritual activities. Now, I had another question that you talked about um, in terms of the study you had with uh, urban African-American youth. Um, but maybe to clarify to our um, audience here, how did uh, ethnicity or uh, racial identity impact the results of your study in terms of in comparison with other groups like white Americans versus, you know, like what was unique about that in comparison to other yeah. groups? That's a really good question. And, and with the qualitative work, we are really aiming to like understand one group, you know, specifically, so not necessarily to, um, to engage in comparison, but I think looking at the larger literature on, on civic engagement, which is focused mostly on like white middle-class American young people. So we, we need way more research from all over the world on, on these topics. Um, but um, focusing in on um, black youth uh, from a particular community, I think really did, did show how um, like the findings with racial justice, how that is a driving force for the youth in our in our study, for all of them, and they they conceptualized it in slightly different ways or did different activities, but that was really this driving value. Not to say that it was not a driving value in other samples, but it was is very much personal and political for these young people based on their own experiences of discrimination of racism. Um, that would very much tied into um, how they talked about their civic engagement and why they were doing it. So, um, so I would expect, you know, similar processes, but, you know, with other groups of young people who are marginalized and it face discrimination, that um, those experiences may really shape how they think about social responsibility and really what it looks like for them to engage in action. So, so from your research, and I realize this was a qualitative uh, one study, but from your research, have you found correlations between justice, social justice, and social responsibility? Like, are people who are more justice oriented also more social responsible? And I'm asking this because, you know, many of us here in this audience come from places where, you know, justice, social justice are extremely important, but unfortunately not achieved, does social responsibility bring, promotes, predicts um, justice and social justice? And I know I'm asking a, a big question and putting yeah. it in, in just small, short variables, but I mean, it's any great... thoughts on that from your own research? Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, I think for me, that's that's one of the things that keeps drawing me back to doing research on social responsibility because it's very related to 
helping and, and community. And it also is related to um, political action and, and social justice forms of action. And so it has this, you know, it is a moral value that has this um, concern for care and also for, for justice. Um, that being said, I, I think that, you know, within each individual young person or within different contexts, um, it's not always going to manifest the same way. So um, I think it would be really important to think about like different different manifestations of social responsibility or maybe how broad or narrow um, young people think about social responsibility and those priorities, if they're mostly focused on helping or if they're mostly focused on justice or some combination. So I think there's probably a lot of variability within people, but at least conceptually and in, in some research, social responsibility is related to, to both. Um, types of dimensions. So there is this link to, to social justice. I'm smiling because my, my, and maybe it's the last question we'll ask. And thank you so much for your patience with me. But the last question is, okay, so what happens when we're older? Like, I feel less, you know, motivated to to be an activist, less like we've tried this, we've tried this, we, you know. So, so, and and I feel social responsible. What happens in adulthood that that if if that's true that people feel like okay, you know, I've done enough for my society, for my community, I'm done. Let the youth do that. But what happens to us in in terms of our development and in, in, on social responsibility? So um, that, I mean, that's a really great lifespan question. And um, I do think young people have a certain energy and they bring a certain freshness and innovation to thinking about how to act on their social responsibility through civic action. Um, but as we get to be adults, we do have more political power. We have more social power. We have more, more financial power. Um, and so there's a lot of different ways we can be socially responsible that young people don't have access to. And so I think the manifestations of it change across time. I don't think it makes it more or less valuable or, or evident. It's just a different way of being socially responsible. Um, you know, a lot of times in adulthood, social responsibilities in part thought about through parenting. And um, so you're you're also raising a new generation of, of children when you're parenting. And, and that's a form of social responsibility through people's jobs. Um, you know, it's sort of work can be intertwined with social justice goals and, and, and community building. And so I think it just starts to look different, but I think adults have a lot more opportunity to be socially responsible. Adolescents are more constrained, so they have to show more initiative to, to engage in social responsibility. Wonderful. Thank you. That's, that's very insightful, actually. I haven't thought about the shifts, the way we change, the way we get civically engaged, and the way we feel social responsible. So that's, thank you for that. I think there is a lot that you shared for us, with us, that there's a lot that you are doing in your own research. And I appreciate your time and I appreciate all the um, rich uh, presentation of your research. And I wanna thank our audience for being with us and for listening in from so many different places. And uh, I hope you're okay if people feel okay to email you if they have questions or any follow-up that they would like to um, engage in. And um, I hope that we will have uh, future ways to collaborate and get to know your research even more. Thank you so much. And everyone have a good evening, a good afternoon, or a good morning. Thank yes. you and thank you so much. I really enjoyed the conversation and, and look forward to hearing more about your work and, and also the Institute. But I appreciate everyone joining. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Take care.